Till now we have studied uh, nodal analysis with both types of independent sources. For current sources it is straightforward, for voltage sources we have to define a super node and go ahead with the analysis. Now we will look at how to formulate nodal analysis equations when we have control sources. The first type of control source we will consider will be a voltage control current source. In fact, this will look very similar to a resistor. A resistor also can be thought of as a voltage control current source with the controlling nodes and the controlled nodes being shorted together. Okay, You have seen this earlier when we synthesized a resistor using a voltage controlled current source. Okay, But some features of the conductance matrix will be different from uh, what we had when we had only resistors. So, we will look at those things. A voltage control current source it is connected between some nodes let me call these node 1 and node 2 and the controlling nodes as node 3 and node 4 if there is V x between them the current between node 1 and node 2 will be G m V x. Okay. Now, when I said it is similar to a resistor, this is what I meant. If a resistance is connected between node 1 and node 2 and the voltage difference between node 1 and node 2 is V x, the current through the resistor will be G times V x, where G is the conductance of the resistor. The resistance is R and the conductance is G. Okay. So, you can see that between node 1 and node 2 a certain current is flowing that is proportional to V x. In case of the resistor V x is the voltage between nodes 1 and 2. In case of a control source V x is the voltage elsewhere in the circuit. Okay. What I have put down here is the general structure of uh, the nodal analysis equations for a resistor. Okay. I will fill in the entries what I have is that the equations as you well know is conductance matrix G times the unknown vector V equals the source vector I. Okay. Now, I have shown uh, node 1, node 2 etcetera here corresponding to each row. You know that each row of this corresponds to one of the equations. The first row corresponds to Kirchhoff's current load node 1, the second one to Kirchhoff's current load node 2 and so on Okay, up to node n. There are a total of n plus 1 nodes in the circuit, excluding the reference node, we will have n nodes. And I have also shown uh, these columns and you know that the entry in this column multiplies V 1, the entries in the second column multiply V 2 and so on. So, I have shown V 1, V 2, V 3, V 4 on top just for easy readability. Okay. Now, let us see if a resistance is connected between nodes 1 and 2, what happens to it? How does it contribute to this conductance matrix? Okay, So, there will be a current and the voltage at node 1 is V 1, the voltage at node 2 is V 2. So, the current will be G times V 1 minus V 2, where G again is 1 by R and I have been saying repeatedly, sometimes it is convenient to use resistances in the formulation of equations, sometimes it is more convenient to use conductances. Okay. Now, this current flows from node 1 to node 2. So, obviously, entries corresponding to this resistor will appear in this equation corresponding to node 1 and this equation corresponding to node 2. And secondly, the current itself depends on V 1 and V 2. So, it will appear in this column corresponding to V 1 and this column corresponding to V 2. Okay? And we have already worked this out, right? You already know how to analyze circuits with resistors and control sources. So, you know these things. I am trying to show uh, in a general way how each resistance affects the conductance matrix. Current flowing away from node 1 is G times V 1 minus V 2. So, in the equation for node 1, we will have G times V 1 minus G times V 2. 
remember this g will multiply that and this minus g will multiply that one okay as i've shown on top and the current flowing away from node 2 is g times v2 minus v1 okay remember in each node we group the currents which are flowing away from the node so because the current flowing away from node 2 is g times v2 minus v1 and we'll have g times v2 minus g times v1 of course in these columns and these rows there'll be other terms corresponding to other components connected to this node okay but i am talking about now the contribution of only this particular resistor okay now let me take a different case where this was not node 1 but let's say node 4 okay and this would not be v1 but it would be v4 and the current of course would be g times v4 minus v1 flowing in that direction downwards direction so what would happen in that case the resistance term would appear in the equations for node 4 over here and node 2 over there the current flowing away from node 4 is g times v4 minus v1 so we would have g times v4 minus g times v2 the current flowing away from node 2 is g times v2 minus v4 so i'll have instead of this g i will show it in red it will be g times v2 minus g times v4 okay the symbol shown in black and red represent two different cases what i want you to appreciate now is the fact that in either case right you look at these four black entries they are symmetric about the diagonal of the matrix and you look at these four red entries they are also symmetric about the diagonal of the matrix okay so in either case we will have a symmetric matrix as we've already seen now let's see what happens when we have a voltage controlled current source So I have a voltage controlled current source here. It has a current flowing from node 1 to node 2, but the current itself is proportional to Vx, which is the voltage between node 3 and node 4. Okay, so this current is nothing but G times V3 minus V4. The voltage at node 1 is V1, the voltage at node 2 is V2, the voltage at node 3 is V3, the voltage at node 4 is V4. Okay. So, how does this appear in the conductance matrix? First of all, the current is flowing from node 1 to node 2, which means that the equation for node 1 and equation for node 2, these two equations contain the term corresponding to the controlled source Gm. Okay. So, the current flowing away from node 1 is Gm times V3 minus V4. So, it will have g m over here and minus g m over there plus g m multiplies v 3 minus g m multiplies v 4. The current flowing away from node 2 is the negative of this. So, we will have g m times v 4 minus g m times v 3. Okay. Now, you see that in many ways this is similar to the resistors case the two nodes between which the control source is connected their equations contain terms corresponding to the control source but the important difference is that in general these entries are no longer symmetric about the diagonal of the matrix okay so when you have a voltage control current source you can go ahead and write the node equations like before except that the conductance matrix will not be symmetric okay so, that is the difference in general between these two cases. Now, I will show a particular example. Usually, what I do is I show some particular examples and then generalize. In this case, I decided to do it the other way around because the resistors case is so easy. I also wanted to show how the voltage control current source is similar to a resistor, but the only difference is that the entries appear asymmetrically in the matrix. Okay.
So, let us say we take a circuit similar to what we have been considering all along, but one of the resistors is replaced by a voltage control current source. This is I 1, I 3, R 1 1, R 3 3, R 1 2, R 2 3 and we have only three nodes in here 1, 2 and 3 and let us say that this current source is g m times v x, where v x is this one. Okay. So, v x is basically v 2 minus v 3. So, first of all, it is obvious that this current source appears only in the equation for node 2, because it is connected between node 2 and the reference node. I have chosen the same reference node as I have previously done. Okay. So, the equations for uh, nodes 1 and 3 will be exactly the same as before. So, if I write the equation for node 2, what will I get? The total current flowing out of this, which is the sum of this current, that current and that current will be equal to 0, which means that the first one of them is V 2 minus V 1 times G 1 2 and the current through G m is basically V 2 minus V 3 times G m and current through this is basically V 2 minus V 3 times G 2 3 and the whole thing equals 0. Okay. And if I group the coefficients of each variable together, I will have V 1 times minus G 1 2 plus V 2 times G 1 2 plus G 2 3 plus G m plus V 3 times minus G 2 3 minus G m equals 0. Okay. So, this is what I will have. Now, let me write down the entire conductance matrix. I will copy the circuit over. As I said, the equations for node 1 and node 3 are exactly the same as before. So, I will have G 1 1 plus G 1 2 over there, minus G 1 2 there and 0 for the first row and for node 3, G 2 3 plus G 3 3 the total conductance minus G 2 3 over there and 0 over there. And of course, the special case is node 2, which gives you minus G 1 2 and for this we will have G 1 2 plus G 2 3 plus G m and the last one will be minus G 2 3 minus G m. Okay. So, it is still of the form G times V is I and this G matrix contains the conductances and the transconductances or the coefficients of the voltage control current sources in the circuit. Okay. And also you can see that the structure is not symmetric, but other than the fact that the G matrix is asymmetric, it is not very different from the case of having only resistors. Okay. So, it turns out this is the simplest of the control sources. For other control sources, we will have to uh, do things like we did in case of the voltage source uh, using super nodes and so on. Okay.